Okay, when we get to this section, it's just asking students demographic information. So some more information like your address, where you're from, uh, the name and social security number will already be pre-filled from the previous section. You can tell this question if you, um, as you adjust it, what state are you from? Notice that this question adjusts, and this question about how long you have lived there is really related to straight state grant application, so that's why that information is important. Um, your telephone number and email address are required, and you do want to provide a good email address because that is how FAFSA will keep in touch with you if there are any issues. Marital status as of today, that's a question that sometimes trips people up, and notice the help here on the right. And this is for you, the student. Remember, we're still in the student section. What is your marital status as of the day you are filling out the form is how you answer that question. Driver's license information is optional. This question about citizenship status is an important one. So you can see the help here to the right gives you details about what exactly we mean by U.S. citizen or U.S. national, if you've been a naturalized U.S. citizen. Eligible non-citizens, there are several categories like U.S. permanent resident. So if you have what used to be called a green card, um, all of that details here tell you the various statuses of eligible non-citizen that allow, do allow you to qualify for federal student aid. If you don't qualify for one of those statuses, then you would say, you would answer this question by saying, no, I'm not a U.S. citizen or an eligible non-citizen. And that would be for people who are uh, international students, undocumented students, for example, would have to say no to that question. And that does make you ineligible for federal student aid. However, it's still worth your time to fill out the FAFSA because that information is shared with the schools that you're applying to and they can consider you for institutional aid based on that basis. So. Uh, students who have a social security number, so undocumented students who, for example, have DACA status, do have a social security number and will be able to fill out the FAFSA, um, but you're still not going to be considered for federal student aid. So you might want to double check with the school you're applying to to make sure it's worth your time to fill out the FAFSA, um, but you can still do that if that's your status. We're going to go ahead and say, yes, the student is a U.S. citizen. Uh, and just a side note, we'll get to this section, I think, in a bit, but parents, if your parents are not one of those eligible statuses, if your parents are not U.S. citizens, that's okay. You can still out fill out the FAFSA. Your eligibility is based on the student status. This question about being registered for the selective service is only available, only comes up if you've said you're male in the application because that is the federal rules. Um, you'll see here, if I say no to this question, I'm presented with information um, that will allow the Department of Education to send your information to Selective Service and register you. Um, they will happily do that for you. If you're already registered, that's okay. This is a requirement of receiving federal student aid if you are a male over age 18 that you have registered with the Selective Service. Uh, and that is not something that we can change. This again, remember, this is not about um, signing up for the draft. This is just about registering with Selective Service, and it is a requirement of receiving federal student aid. These next questions have to do with high school completion status. Just you know, read the years carefully. Remember what year you're in, what year you're going to, um, to help keep that straight in your mind how you answer these questions. Um, so, uh, 
what will be your high school completion status. Many of you will be able to say you'll have a high school diploma. These other statuses um, do still allow you to qualify for federal student aid. There just may be additional questions or documentation required before you can do that. And what will be your grade level? Your choices here are never attended, attended before, or if you are going to be a continuing undergraduate. Um, remember, undergraduate is for those first four years of college. Um, graduate students uh, who are looking at master's degrees or beyond would be putting their information down here. This question of whether or not you've ever attended college before, you just need to answer truthfully. So if you've earned some college credit, concurrent enrollment, those sorts of things while in high school, you would say you're still a first year student, but you have attended college before. These do not impact significantly on your federal aid eligibility. So just answer those questions truthfully. And what degree will you be working on? A bachelor's degree is your first four-year degree after leaving high school. So most students who are coming straight out of high school are gonna say a bachelor's degree. An associate degree is a two-year degree that you might get at a community college, for example, um, or a certificate program, uh, like a technical education for programs that are less than two years. Um, all of these different statuses do allow you still to qualify for federal student aid, but at different levels. So that's why it's important to uh, know where you're heading and answer that question truthfully. Uh, are you interested in being considered for work study? So this is, uh, people worry a lot about the answer to this question. It doesn't commit you to anything um, regardless of how you answer the question, it's just a piece of information that gets passed on to the schools that you're applying to. You may or may not be offered federal work study based on how you answered that question, and you can still change your mind at the time the offer is made. Um, so don't agonize over your answer to that question. And will you have your first bachelor's degree um, before uh, in this case, it's July 2014 because this application is for the 2014-15 academic year. Remember, the bachelor's degree is your degree after four years of education after high school. So most people are going to say no to that question. Highest school completed by parent. Um, these are just informational questions. Don't drive eligibility. So really for research purposes, you can put whatever is appropriate for you there. This page is questions about your high school. It, the Department of Education wants to know where your high school was and if you've completed high school. So if you enter your information about your high school, click confirm, you're presented with a list of schools down here at the bottom. Um, when you see your school, just click select. If you enter a name that is not in their system and you're unable um, to locate it in their list, notice the hints over here about how to um, match up to the list. Um, it will allow you to type in the name, the city and state, and leave it at that point, but it'll ask you a few extra questions.